thanks today mm. and we welcome you Hallelujah. dear viewers and listeners to this week's edition of the other jesus course and you know lindsay how often have we seen strange behaviors in what's known as church many <laughs> many times too many Ex times that's it Real, real. I mean, I, our old friend David Owen, I remember him talking about a church at Lanethley mm. where actually the minister was going around with a feather duster <laughs> so as to apparently, in inverted commas, stir up the spirits and putting it under people's noses. Um, more perhaps likely to bring sneezes. Go on, you got <laughs> I was going to say, perhaps it was a Ken Dodd spirit. A Ken Dodd spirit. Well, I think he had a better spirit than the one David was facing at Clanetley. But Lindsay, thank you very much indeed. You know, it goes either one or two ways. We've been dealing with in our other Jesus course over past weeks. We've been dealing with the origins. Remember Oregon, remember Clement, remember the culminating of paganism and apparent form of Christianity and philosophy, both from Rome eventually and from Greece. We remember talking about the Egyptian, Egyptian, Egyptian God soft weighing the souls of the dead, having an altar at Elam Bible College, it teaching Egyptology more than biblical truth. We're dealing with uh, um, the differences in translations, the denial of, of Jesus as God manifest in the flesh um, upon this earth. We've dealt with Clements and the Gnostics 
and various belief structures like that of Martin, uh, rather Justin Martyr, who said the Logos is the pre-existent absolute personal reason. And it goes either one or two ways in the Alexandrian churches. They're either completely dead, like the one here at Whithorn, Scotland, or they go into what's known as the charismatic giftings, and that has commonly come out of what's known today as the Alpha Course, which we will be dealing with next week. But as an introduction to that, we're dealing today with the origins of, of strange behaviors beginning with a warning from christ jesus himself he said for false christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible even the elect now how can you tell the difference the true minister admits his weakness paul went on and on and on about it but what we have in the strange behavior church are big boy apostles big boy prophets and they think they're above everybody else and behave in that manner which is totally unbiblical and it is those type of alexandrian churches rather than the dead type we're going to be talking about today they use a phrase like allowing the spirit to come through the trouble being that this is always a counterfeit spirit from the Alexandrian Bibles, which deny the Christ, deny his deity, deny his resurrection as it relates to believers. So from the very outset, with the wrong word of God, we're dealing with another spirit, another Jesus. And this counterfeit spirit will always look to confirm a counterfeit word. We know that those involved in allowing the Spirit, how often have we seen them with a day's look, Lindsay? Oh, man, we have seen this loads of times. Time after time again, they look dazed. And, and look, can I do an impression of one, you know? And they start to grunt, yeah? And they talk more of experience of this. They talk more of that than God's word. Now, within this context, are testimonies of people claiming that they can now do things that they could not do before. But always, the emphasis is on the sense realm. Whereas the Bible says, those led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, those affected by the sense realm spirit are commonly angry people, critical, unkind, and often have an inflated sense of self, completely opposite to the true Holy Ghost, which cuts the believer to the heart. Deceiving spirits thrive in these places of this allowing the spirit culture where the word of God has not been preached. Now, people are changed in the way they behave often, taking on an appearance of another person. You know, Lindsay and I know that if we, for example, don't think we're going down to the pub all the time, then none of them are open anyway, so don't even go there. But you can have a much better conversation with someone from a pub than you can from people who have been affected by all of this because people are changed in the way they behave often taking the appearance of another person now we've experienced this Lindsay and I and whenever they say we will now say the grace we want to keep running away from this they smile with a false smile you know, years ago, there used to be a TV presenter called Huey Green. I met him once in a lift in Liverpool when I was doing an impersonation of him. 
<laughs> and uh, I, we were in the same lift, so I thought I'd better back off on this one. And and so he used to say, most sincerely, friends. Well, friends, we welcome to Opportunity Knox. And most sincerely, most sincerely. He kept emphasizing most sincerely. And forgive me, but it looked like quite a false smile sometimes. And this is what we find in what they do when they say the grace. And what's interesting, they get in a circle commonly, which is an occultic thing. You've heard of this um, idea of a round table. And that term is often used. And getting in a circle, and then they look into each other's faces and smile at each other. And you know what's going on is totally devilish. An outsider looking in would say that these people are affected people. And indeed, this is correct. Indeed, my mother used to say to me, the problem with people who like call themselves Pentecostal, and she was referring to personal experience, they often have severe mental difficulties. And that is on the experience only Pentecostals rather than the word-based Pentecostals, which is what we are here. And there is many of them who are used to this certain kind of operation. They come here for a time and then run away. And it's because they're used to being pampered within the fellowship. They're used to the me taking first place, where in the true church of God, it is only Jesus who has the preeminence. I remember the Lord took me well out of this scene. And Lindsay spoke to me. said, go back to your mission hall days where commitment, conviction, the word of God was given first place. And this is what brings stability. Let's look at what the word of God says. Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. But this Holy Ghost ghost in these charismatic churches continues to want to minister to people and keep people down and suppress them rather than empower them for the mission of the gospel and we've known this for people come to join us they expect to be ministered to rather than minister to the lord by going out and reaching every creature mark 16 15 gives the whole context of this. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. We've just done a constitution keeper program, giving a warning to our nation over its, over its, its current damnation and future damnation. For by not keeping its constitution, the word is clear, this will lead to damnation. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the words, word with signs following. Amen. This is the context of the receiving of the Spirit. Now, please note that scripturally, one, the Holy Ghost is given to empower the believer for ministry not for sense delight. Two, the word is go, not stay for ministry. Number three, the Lord confirms the word with signs following. The word comes first. Now with this move of the spirit, that is the counterfeit move of the spirit, comes a craving for more and more ministry. You get the same people coming up with issue after issue after issue onto healing lines. But with this submission to this spirit comes depression, feelings of heaviness and bitterness, 
towards others. How often have we seen that, Lindsay? Lots of times. Now, within this context come testimonies of supernatural visions and manifestations with the believer relying on these rather than God's word. Lindsay and I have seen this so often. How often have we seen this, Lindsay? Too many times. Too many times. The spirit then has the believer exactly where he wants him or her. The scriptures may be quoted within this context, but only as an obscure way of seemingly proving the manifestation to be of God. The true church emphasizes the word first. The church of the false word emphasizes the experience and finds scripture to prove it. And of course, in the NIV and all the other new translations, modern translations, that word can be found. Now, non-action is another fruit of this apparent allowing the Spirit. Now, the true Holy Ghost brings about action, but the reaction this deceiving Spirit brings is often in the imagination realm. And this realm is a place well understood by mediums and the like. So to summarize, the Alexandrian allowing the spirit churches have believers who won when praying sink into a passive position which they interpret as waiting on God. Two, become passive rather than active in everyday life. And three, have no vision and plans to meet God's call for their lives, which is contrary to Habakkuk 2, which is one, stand on your watch, write the vision, in the appointed time you will run with it. They are just absolutely in a daze. And when you confront them with this, they commonly run. Now, the biblical way in contrast is as follows. We read 2 Timothy 3, 14 through to 17. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And one thing they never teach is perfection. Because they like being ministered to. They like the attention. And when they don't get it, they run. Now within this context comes what have become strange goings on in meetings. Now, Frank Bartman, who came out in the 1906 Azusa Street Revival, said, many are willing to seek power from every battery they can lay their hands on in order to perform miracles. But a true Pentecost will produce a mighty conviction for sin, a turning to God. False manifestations produce only excitement and wonder, and any work that exalts the Holy Ghost or the gifts above Jesus will finally land up in fanaticism. What a wise man, Frank Bartleman. Doesn't that sum everything up right in a nutshell? And we read a warning from Isaiah in his chapter 58. Cry aloud, spur not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression. The house of Jacob, their sins. Now, I would say, Lindsay, in what's known now as Pentecostal stroke charismatic, I've just described the majority. Unfortunately, yes. That there is only a remnant who stands and preach God's true word. Now, our work on notes which you can send for the ECCTV4219 at gmail.com are a warning from God for these last days in which God is looking to is restore his word to the church that the world might know that Jesus is Lord. Instead, Lucifer's own word has taken priority in his NIV or RSV, whatever they are, churches. And after all, in the NIV, we read the same titles for Jesus 
as are given to Lucifer, which is, of course, the ultimate blasphemy. We read in the authorized version, Isaiah 14, 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? But thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. This is Lucifer. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will sit upon the mount. That means he will sit in the high place in congregations. I will send thee above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And these clouds are what these so-called new Pentecostals charismatics are walking in. Mm. Yet thou shalt be brought down to the hell, to the sides of the pit. Now let's just look at how devilish the NIV is. This is just one modern translation. Now, NIV in Isaiah 14, 12 through to 15 reads this. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. Now, look at that, morning star. Whereas in the authorized version, he's son of the morning. Yes. We now promoted Lucifer in the NIV to being the morning star. Now, remember that. Is that the title of Lucifer here? Because it's referring to one fallen on heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High, but you are brought down to the grave, because there's no hell in any NIV, to the depths of the pit. So the devil ain't going to hell in the NIV. Nope. Have you got it? But what's important, we remember here, is the title given to Lucifer in Isaiah 14, 12, in the NIV. Is it morning star? Yes or no? Yes. Yet we read in NIV 2 Peter 1.19, referring to it's Jesus. And we have the words of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns, and the morning star, which of course the NIV has already told us is, is, is Lucifer, rises in your heart as a reference to Christians. And now the ultimate heresy. No wonder there's so many strange behaviours. Are we establishing this now? In NIV Revelation 22, 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star, which the NIV has already told us to be Lucifer. Has this proved the other Jesus? Now, Many Alexandrian churches, going back now to the 1990s, embraced what was known as the Toronto Blessing. And even though you might think this began well, because it was with Vineyard, before Vineyard, and John Wimber was a good man of God. He worked with David Rotson to bring the Anglican renewal in Great Britain, and this was the Toronto Vineyard Church, Toronto Airport Vineyard Church. But even John Wesley warned, he says, at the first revival is true and pure, but after a few weeks, watch for counterfeits. What a warning from John Wesley there. And indeed, however you want to interpret Toronto, it certainly moved into counterfeits. Now, if you combine spirituality and the Alexandrian word, the result will be the same devils. Now, 
The following book extract illustrates the dangers of excess. But the reason for it being included here in our course is to show that the true blood-bought word, if it is preached, will bring the conviction so as to prevent this happening. Now, this extract is from a century-old book by a T.W. Caskey, in which he recalls many of the religious happenings in the southern states of America in the early 1800s. He said, this was the period when many huge camp meetings were held in the South, accompanied by unusual religious phenomena, which they called revival. Now, this is the actual quote. Some would fall prostrate and lie helpless for hours at a time. The whole congregation, by some inexplicable nervous action, would sometimes be thrown into side-splitting convulsions of laughter. When it started, no power could check or control it until it ran its course. Now, at other times, the nervous excitement set the muscles, the twitching and jerking at a fearful rate. How often have we seen that, Lindsay? Lots of times. And finally, settled down to regular, straightforward dancing. Now, like the holy laugh, in inverted commas, it was simply ungovernable until it ran its course. Now, when a man started laughing, dancing, shouting or jerking, it was impossible for him to stop until exhausted nature broke down in a death-like swoon. Has that described so much of what we've witnessed, uh, Lindsay? And all now let's understand this, and those doing the course, this is our question. If there is another Jesus, then surely there has to be another Holy Ghost. How can we distinguish between the true and the false. Mm -hmm. Now we'll, we're going to be starting next week to examine this. When we come to one of the biggest counterfeits. Certainly of the last century. In what became known as, as the Alpha Course. Mm -hmm. And indeed we start gaining an understanding for the beginning of this of how the denial of hell and new translations have played a part in this that came from Alexandria, Egypt. And of course, from Holy Trinity Brompton has come the present Archbishop of Canterbury, which gives us understanding of a very strange Anglican church in Britain which is being taken on by African Anglicans who are looking to keep the old paths of Cranmer, Latimer and Ridley. So next week we'll be dealing with a summary of just what we've been talking about today and leading that in to Nicky Gumbel and the Alpha Course, the devilish trap which has taken away so many souls. But Lindsay, we talk of the hill called Mount Calvary. It is this Lindsay's to sing about. You know, when we come together as believers, we share one another's burdens, we cast them upon the Lord. And these burdens were lifted as Calvary, as the hymn declares. You know, I love the line in this song, Lindsay, to sing, I believe that the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely. A new life is mine. Why, by the cross, I will stay. Lindsay, come and sing. Thank you for being with us. It's been quite a wonderful presence of the Lord. Amen. As we've shared these things, yes. if you've been bound up by this, contact us at ECCTV4219 at gmail.com. Lindsay and I understand. We've seen mm. it too. We even got taken in ourselves at one time. We did. And we're glad the Lord took us back to mission hall days and the old-fashioned conviction of the Spirit. And Lindsay sing this lovely hymn. Yes, I will.
This is the foundation of everything. Jesus. And he never changes. But, as David read at the beginning, there are false Christs in the last days and so much deception. But let's look to the cross now and the true Jesus and what he did for us forever. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost, and when time has surrendered, and yet. Still cling to the old rugged cross. I believe that this life, with its great mysteries, surely someday will come to an end. But faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me at last to my crown. I believe that the cross who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today for he changed me completely a new life is mine that is why by the cross I will stay I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary I believe whatever the Thank you, dear viewers and listeners, for being with us today as we examine the other Jesus and the other Holy Spirit. But above all, as we look to the Jesus who is the same yesterday and today and forever, and who has done the work, the finished work for us 2,000 years ago in Calvary, becoming the curse for us to free us forever from the curse of the law. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you for the next installment next Thursday of the Other Jesus course. Remember he said in the book of Revelation, I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And you'll see the significance of that when you tune in to view the next week's course. 
Bye for now. God bless you.